Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. <sighs> Y'all, <laughs> y'all, I am not here for this live stream, Lynn era. I don't endorse it, I don't co-sign it. I hate when she does these hours long live streams. I don't know why I just made every word of that plural, but I just, I'm just not a fan. I don't care for it. It just takes so long to get through it and you have to sit through so much shit that is not entertaining or interesting to get to the entertaining and interesting parts. And since I last covered Amberlynn on my channel, she's done two of these live streams, one called We Need to Talk and the other called There's More We Need to Talk About. So today I'm gonna do my best to cover everything that went down in both of those live streams <laughs> and let you know my thoughts and opinions about it all. But first, I just wanna thank today's sponsors. The sponsor for today's video is Wudoku. Wudoku is a woodblock puzzle game that meets a Sudoku grid. And and it's completely free to download on both iOS and Android devices. This game offers hundreds of challenging levels that test your IQ and intelligence. And there are three different modes to experience and explore during your gameplay. In the game, players have to match up wooden block tiles to form a line which will clear the tiles and earn you points. I personally really enjoy playing it when I'm looking to relax at the end of the day, when I'm laying in bed, getting ready to fall asleep. It helps calm me and get my mind off of all of the things that I went through that day. It can be played anywhere at any time, so I also like to use it as a way to kill time when I'm waiting for the bus, when I'm waiting for Noel to be ready to watch our favorite TV shows at night, or when I'm waiting for Amber Lynn to post her latest video. I can't tell you how much time I've spent playing this game and enjoying this game, so if you're interested in playing it and trying it out as well, make sure to use my link down below to download the game for free. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. You can also use the QR code on the screen, right meow, to also download the game. And just as a reminder, it's completely free to download and available on iOS and Android devices. Thank you so much to Wodoku for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get to, let's get to, shall we? So yeah, I'm gonna do my best to break down both of the live streams. Due to the massive length of each of the live streams, one was two hours and 15 minutes, the other was an hour and 40 minutes, I'm probably not gonna cover every single thing that happened in both of the live streams just because I'm covering both of them. Some of that might just be because I unintentionally missed something. I was listening on 2x speed, so chances are I might not have heard something all the way or missed something that, that y'all might have felt was important. Um, and some of it is intentional due to the nature of the topic. For instance, I'm not personally going to be talking about the essay allegations because that's something traditionally I've not covered on my channel. And I also really don't have a desire to talk about Amberlynn's cancer diagnosis any more than I already have on my channel in the past because I do believe that she had it and I do think it's frustrating that people continue to question her about the legitimacy of her cancer diagnosis. But outside of that, I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can. So for the first live stream, I'm actually going to break it up by topic. So like for instance, the stuff about Destiny is all gonna be one topic. Uh, but for the second live stream, I'm just gonna discuss it chronologically, meaning in the order that she talked about things in the live stream. And I'll put timestamps for all of these things down below so that you can just skip to the stuff that you wanna hear about the most if that is your preference. Otherwise, feel free to just watch straight through. So in the first live stream, probably the largest topic she spent time talking about was the stuff related to Destiny and all of the things that Destiny had said. Well, she didn't cover every single thing that Destiny had said. In fact, she started off the live stream saying like, Destiny said a lot, so just ask me what you want me to address. Can you address what Destiny has said? So Destiny has said a lot and I don't even know where to begin. So you guys can just ask me like individual questions. Which all of this, like this idea that we're talking about what Destiny has to say, period, is interesting and fascinating to me because we know Amber Lynn has posted like 1,200 Instagram stories talking about how she wasn't going to talk about Destiny's stories, allegations, this, that, the other. 
So it's confusing to me now that we're going to open up a live stream and just subject ourselves to to what everybody has to say about the stories that Destiny's been telling. And one of the first things that Amberlynn does talk about is the story about Destiny's mom hitting her. And she does explain why she needs to tell her side of the story. I know people are going to choose to believe the more entertaining story, the, the side that makes me look like the bad guy, which it's totally fine. But I feel like because of this whole situation has been so heavy, I feel like it's only like, it's important that I also get my side out. We are going to talk at different points during this video today about how Amber Lynn has gone back and said, like, I wasn't being real then. I was, I was faking things. I was faking my happiness or I was trolling. We know that she says that a lot. And I will say in this particular instance, I do understand why she wouldn't have been talking about Destiny's mom hitting her in a YouTube video. I mean, in all honesty, like, I don't know why anybody would share a story like that on their public platform. Like, I would, I would expect that would probably not be something you would publicly be sharing with somebody, especially when you're trying to stay in a committed relationship with the daughter of said person that I hate you. So with all that being said, I think it's fair that she's sharing her piece now, although I do still question whether it's a good idea for her to respond to any of the Destiny stuff, but here we are, she's doing it. So let's just get to. At one point she talks about how great of a relationship she has with Destiny's mom. In fact, she actually talks about it a lot during both live streams. Me and Destiny's mom, her name is Mendy, so I'm going to say her name. Uh, me and Mendy got really, really close after me and Destiny broke up. And, you know, she wanted me to move in with her and she loved me as her daughter. After um, Mendy passed away, Destiny found a video on Mendy's phone, like a private video that she took saying how like, I'm like a daughter to her. And, and apparently like after Destiny's mom passed away, Destiny found a video on her phone about Amber Lynn, which I do think is sweet if that's the case, if that's true. I will say, and some people in the chat were saying this as well, I do feel like it's kind of cringe to be talking about all of this stuff with Destiny's mom now that Destiny's mom has passed away. But also with that being said, I really don't think Amber Lynn would be talking about any of this stuff if Destiny hadn't brought it up to begin with. So I don't know. I think it's just like cringe on both sides, to be honest with you. And basically Amber Lynn goes on to share the story about Destiny's mom just being violent towards her and things like that. So uh, I guess a little bit of a content warning right here if you're not prepared to hear things like that. Destiny's mom would drink a lot of alcohol. Something that everyone around Destiny's mom would notice is that when she would do that, she would act. See, I don't want to say anything rude because I love her mom so freaking much. For the lack of a better uh, word or term, she would take out a lot of her anger on me. And that's something that Destiny noticed. I accepted it for a long time. I would ignore it. I would leave the room. But there comes a time where someone does want to stick up for themselves. And I tried to stick up for myself a few times. So this one example was me and Destiny were sitting in the kitchen, the dining room table. And we were talking about work. And this is when I was... We were both training to uh, work at a place called Source HOV, which was data entry. I was saying how like I love the job, but I, I remember saying like YouTube is also also important to me. Like I was weighing out my options. Mendy was in the living room and she got upset with what I was saying. And she was saying how she didn't agree with me doing YouTube and didn't think that I should do it and didn't want me to stay at home and just like gain all this weight and all this stuff. At the time... Because of everything else that had happened with me and Mendy prior to this incident, my emotions, I exploded and I just started crying. And I said, this is none of your business. I said, you know, this is kind of like up to me because during that time, me and Destiny were actually looking for a place to live because I did not want to stay living there because every night I would come home from work and I, her mom would be drunk and she would just be... I rate at everything and anything and she would take it out on me. I remember when I said, you know, this isn't up to you. This is up to me, whatever it may be. Mendy got really mad 
And she said, you know what, then I want you to, to leave. She was like kicking me out. I remember she went all the way upstairs. She started grabbing my perfume. And I think she threw like two down the stairs, two of my perfumes. I started screaming because it's like, I felt so much trauma. This was very much like, wow. Okay. So this is how my dad used to act. Long story short, um, I said something that I can't remember. If Destiny can remember, I would love for her to share that. I think I blacked out. It felt like I did because the next thing I knew, Mendy was running down the stairs And then she started like literally punching me, slapping me. And I remember falling to the ground and she got a K cup, which was metal and it was pretty big. And she was hitting me over the head with it. Um, I did not touch her. I did not hit her. I did not disrespect her in the way that like, I feel like a lot of people probably thought. So it sounds like it was just in general, not a good situation for Amberlynn to be in. It sounds like Destiny's mom had a lot of things to work on when it came to um, violence, anger, and or alcoholism, which I do just want to say all of this pretty much for the most part lines up with the things that Destiny had said about the situation. And it just is from Amberlynn's perspective and what Amberlynn was feeling at the time. One thing I will note is that during this time, Amberlynn claimed that she blacked out for part of it, which I do just think is interesting because on Instagram, uh, like a week or two ago, I don't know exactly when she posted it, but on Instagram, somebody accused her of, or didn't accuse, it was more like a, hey, is it possible that you just blacked out during the Code Red incident, and Amberlynn's like, I've never blacked out before. But like I said, most of this seemed to line up with what I remember Destiny telling of the story. Uh, Obviously, there are a few things added because they were from Amberlynn's perspective specifically. And I honestly have to say, now don't call me an am baby, but I honestly have to say, some people in the chat were being really wild about it. And saying that, like, Amberlynn was, like, playing victim and blaming Destiny's mom for things and things like that. And it just seemed really off to me because from everything I heard, everything, for the most part, was about the same in the ways that they told the story. The next thing Amberlynn talked about was Destiny acting like she had never seen any of the videos or anything like that that Amberlynn had posted on the internet. Anything that I ever shared about destiny was because she gave me permission or and destiny coming on here acting like i've never seen any of these videos like it's so crazy like why would she say some of these things like it's just straight up lies i will say that i do find it hard to believe that destiny's never seen any of the stuff that amberlynn has posted about her or with her on the internet i just don't really believe that (laughs) destiny wasn't aware of any of the things on Amber Lynch channel, but I would say that it's believable and possible that Destiny hadn't seen everything and that there were things that she was surprised to learn about or see after the fact. As Destiny alluded to in a recent live stream that she did, like, Destiny has talked to me off and on for years, although up until recently when I messaged her about Fortnite, the last time I'd probably talked to her was in 2019, I believe. And it was never anything scandalous, but just the fact that she knew I existed as a reaction channel and was messaging me makes me believe that, like, she's known about things that have happened on Amber Lynn's channel for quite some time. Amber Lynn takes a lot of time to own up to a lot of the things that Destiny said throughout the live stream. The first one being about how she didn't shower while she lived with Destiny's mom and calling Destiny out for... Uh, telling these stories for healing. I am here to admit anything that I did. Like Destiny saying that I didn't shower while living with her mom is absolutely 100% her telling the truth. I did not shower while living with her mother because I could not fit in the shower. And it's like for Destiny to come on here and to say that this is her healing while laughing at something as me not being able to fit in the shower, that's not healing. And I would agree that some of the things that Destiny shared seem to be less about her healing and more about just like getting views and clicks and and winning internet points on her videos. Like mostly specifically the things that come to like Amberlynn's hygiene or 
uh, saying that Amberlynn was smelly. I think that those things really feel like mostly just trying to like hurt Amberlynn more so than they are trying to heal. Although I think a lot of the things that Destiny shared genuinely were about her healing. Like I think it's fine for Destiny to share some of the more frustrating parts of her relationship with Amberlynn and also share the parts of Amberlynn's content that she wasn't happy with being shared. Like the times where Amberlynn was like filming her butt crack and things like that. But that's largely why I didn't cover the live stream that Destiny did with fiance number three. Because the main thing that people seem to have taken from that live stream was just that Destiny was calling Amberlynn smelly. But again, I still also really believe that Amberlynn monetized all of her girlfriends and their experiences together. So I do feel like they're entitled to share whatever the fuck they want to share, to be quite honest with you. Like, if they want to share it, go for it. Like, I wouldn't do that to an ex, although I've never dated a popular YouTuber, but I wouldn't do that to an ex like that. But, you know, that's not up to me. That's their own choices as adults. But speaking of that argument about Amberlynn monetizing her relationship, she actually does bring that up in this live stream. A lot of people keep talking about, it's like, well, you monetized your relationship. Every single penny that I've ever made while in a relationship with someone, besides with Feline, Feline's the only person, actually. <laughs> we don't share money. We don't share a bank account. But while with Destiny, while with other people... Um, all my money that I made was theirs. I find it really interesting that she talks about how all the money that she's ever made from YouTube has been shared with her girlfriends, except for her current girlfriend, Wifey. But I don't think she realizes what a power imbalance that creates. Like, if Destiny or Becky was really relying on your income from YouTube, then I could see it being really difficult for either of them to speak out about your behavior, about not liking something in the relationship, about not liking something you were putting on YouTube, this, that, the other. Because they rely on you to make that money and share it with them. But I'm also confused because the way Amber Lim presents it is as though Destiny didn't have her own job, which we know she did because that was half of the conflict uh, that led to them breaking up is that Destiny was at her job all day flirting with other girls and Amber Lim wasn't there with her at all times. And then we get into this conversation about money that's just really baffling to me because Amberlynn says that Destiny is lying about never asking her for money. And when she sits there and says, like, I never asked Amberlynn for money, that is a fucking lie. And it's a little bit confusing for a second because she literally had just got done talking about how all of her money was Destiny's money. And I didn't realize that she was actually just talking about, like, Destiny asking for money after the breakup. So it was, a, it was very confusing, but she does go on to explain that this is about after they broke up and Destiny was asking for money. And it's like the only time she wanted to ever be my friend or hang out with me. I'm going to let you guys know that anytime that you guys ever saw her on my vlog as a friend, it's because I either paid for her gas to come to me. I either Venmoed her money to come to me. I paid for whatever we did, the food, the, the fucking movies. I paid for everything. If you ever saw us in a restaurant, it's because I paid. If you ever saw us going to the movies, it's because I paid. If you ever saw us at Walmart, it's because I paid. If you ever saw anything, it's because I paid. And yes, I did that willingly because that is the person that I am. So essentially, anytime that Destiny made an appearance in an Amberlynn Reed vlog, which again, she was monetizing, making money off of. Again, this is during a period where she later admitted that she was still in love with Destiny despite being in a relationship with Becky. We find out that Amberlynn was giving her money every single time she appeared in a video and or that Destiny was asking for money and in exchange was being in videos. And this part just really confuses me because it doesn't make sense that Amber Lynn would, would spill all this and say all this about Destiny when Destiny was actually very nice for the most part when it came to talking about Amber Lynn giving her money. If you didn't know, prior to Destiny coming out and doing all of these videos, people used to give Amber Lynn a hard time all the time for trying to buy Destiny's love and friendship 
and things like that. And when Destiny started talking about this stuff, she was, for the most part, very kind and talked about how Amberlynn just did this out of the goodness of her heart because Amberlynn really cared about her friends and Amberlynn wanted to give money to people that she cared about. And that lined up with what Amberlynn always said when people accused her of buying friendships is that she was doing it out of the goodness of her heart, she cared about Destiny and Dana, and she wanted them to have the things that they needed. So now for Amberlynn to flip it up and, and change it into this like Destiny was a, a user, used me for money, begged me for money. It's just very confusing to me. Although I will say Amberlynn did remind me that there was one point in a Destiny video where Destiny did say that she felt like Amberlynn held money over people's heads. And of course, after Amberlynn says that and reminds me of that, she goes on to share an example of where she held money over Destiny's head. Because there was several times where I would, let's say an example, um, Destiny, we were hanging out um, and she said something rude to me. You can even ask Dana. Destiny was a fucking cunt towards me on period. I don't know if this is going to get demonetized. I would not be surprised. She was so fucking rude to me. Like, <laughs> you can ask Dana. So rude to me all the time. And I would be like, Destiny, why do you disrespect me so much while, like, we're out to dinner and I'm paying for it? Basically, it was like, if you don't act a certain way towards me or, or treat me with the utmost kindness and respect, then you, you don't deserve the money I give you. Which, like, is in opposition to this, like, idea and narrative that Amberlynn was just giving money to people that she cared about because she cared about them, not because they were going to treat her a certain kind of way or anything like that. And I also have to say, if she really felt so disrespected by Destiny all the time, then why are you letting this continue on? You're the one paying for everything. You're the one that said that you pay for gas money for Destiny and Dana to come see you. If you didn't want to see Destiny anymore, if you didn't want to deal with her disrespect, you could simply stop giving her the money because it sounds like she's relying on you for it. And also she did kind of respond to that question as I was thinking it in her live stream. And her response essentially is like, you just learn to accept the love that you think you deserve. I loved them and cared for them so much that I didn't care how bad they made me feel. You accept the love you think you deserve. And ooh, <laughs> the most the most cringe quote comes about, about all the ways that Destiny used her. She took my money. She took my happiness and she just made me feel like shit. She left me like a fucking raisin. She just took it all. And, you know, in vlogs, I would show this like happy side of me and I would be laughing and this and that. But like deep down, like that shit was fake. <laughs> that was so fake. And it's because Destiny made me feel like shit all the time. And despite the cringe raisin reference, I don't know that I truly understand it, but despite that, she does spend some time talking about how, you know, she only showed herself happy in vlogs even though she wasn't. And this all just continues to be a part of the problem for Amberlynn, and we're going to talk about it a couple more times in today's video. She never really reaches full authenticity on her channel. And anytime anything comes up about her past that there was like an issue with, or that was concerning. She always like writes it off saying like, oh, well, I, I wasn't really being my true honest self then. I wasn't actually happy. I was faking it. I was trolling this, that, the other. There's always some excuse. And I certainly think it can be true some of the time that like, you know, we put on a face for the camera because that's your job. You got it. You got to get on there and be happy. Pretend to be happy, um, even if you might not be. But it can't always be the case. Anytime everybody brings up some some concern or issue from your past, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the issue. And and, and if it really is the case that you weren't being honest, then like what have you built your whole channel on then? If your whole channel was just built on you pretending to be happy, then who really knows who you are as a person and why? She should I take you seriously today? Amberlynn also lets us know that she thinks the reason why Destiny is talking now all has to do with Dana. And that just goes to show like while Dana and Destiny were together, Destiny never went on YouTube to talk bad about me. 
She never shared any personal information, nothing. And now that her and Dana aren't together anymore, she's coming out with all this personal stuff that is like nobody's business. Honestly, I don't know if it's true that Dana kept Destiny from talking about Amber Lynn poorly when they were together or not. I have no evidence one way or the other. But I will say Dana has also been actively DMing me on Instagram since June of 2018. I went back and I do have that receipt. <laughs> I did look at the date for that. And it was pretty mundane things again as well. Like we never talked about Amber Lynn or anything like that. But it was things like, for instance, her congratulating me on getting to 4,000 subscribers, okay? That was a long ass time ago. She's known about my channel for a long time and like congratulated me on like small successes that I had, okay? So I'm just thinking like, you think that Dana isn't out here also just this Amberlynn Reed content because I believe she is. <laughs> I believe she is. Like the same argument could be said that she's just now taking Amberlynn's side because she doesn't like Destiny. They have an enemy in common. And so of course she's gonna like pair up with Amberlynn and like agree to things about Destiny. And I'm not gonna talk about it too in depth, but Amber Lynn clarifies that the like smell that Destiny was allegedly talking about actually wasn't from the time when they were actually dating or um, anything like that, that it was from the times where she was bleeding because of her cancer. Her laughing at the way that I used to smell while saying that that's her way of healing is fucking disgusting because I'm going to explain something. If you go back and you listen to what destiny said, she said that while I was with her, I didn't smell, but from the point of to like sometime in 2018 to I'm pretty sure it was 2020 where I got my hysterectomy. Um, I bled while I had cancer. I bled for two and a half years and it had oh my god this is so fucking triggering and the fact that my ex thinks it's so fucking funny oh i'm just healing i'm just i'm just healing i'm laughing about a cancer cyst um, a cancer person's like fucking cancer system oh my god i can't even talk symptom oh my god see i'm like shaking and like i already said i i generally think that destiny was mostly just saying that to like be mean but one other thing that was happening while Amber Lynn was talking about this part of the video is that a lot of people were talking about the like narc alert sympathy bone situation type of deal and saying like well let me try to find my sympathy bone or like why don't you apologize to narc alert if you're upset about people like not taking your cancer seriously and I'll say like I've mostly tried to not reference that specific moment too many times mostly because in my head I did remember that Amberlynn did post a community tab apology uh, she does reference in both streams that she has issued an apology about it. And I was like, I remember her apologizing for this. In general, she hasn't really done anything too similar uh, to it that I felt like it needs to be brought up again. But I went back and read <laughs> the apology and I also watched the video where I like talked about her apology and it really wasn't a good apology. <laughs> it really wasn't. So I do think to some extent, I understand why people are like, no, you need to do better. But I also feel like some people are just gonna have to realize that like that's the best you're gonna get from Amberlynn. And it happened like a year ago almost. So like it might just be time to let it go because she's not she's obviously not going to say any more than what she's already said. She also clarifies that in her mind, the Code Red situation never happened. Um, the Mountain Dew can story did not happen. Um, I can say that even while me and Destiny were friends, she would bring that up. And I would say that did not happen. And again, this is the time where somebody had suggested on Instagram that maybe she just blacked out. And she said, well, I've, I've never blacked out, which then like contradicts the earlier story she said in the live stream where she's like, I don't know, maybe I blacked out. And then the last major thing in this stream that she talks about in regards to Destiny 
is that Destiny lied about portions of the breakup story. The first thing being that Destiny did want Amber Lynn to quit and just do YouTube just as much as Amber Lynn wanted to quit and just do YouTube. The breaking up story, her ass lied in that like hard. That's where she lied. Oh yeah, and she lied about um, how supposedly she didn't want me to quit my job. Liar. She did want me to quit. She wanted me to work on YouTube just as much as I wanted to. So, And to me, it honestly doesn't actually, based on what Amber Lynn says, it doesn't actually seem like Destiny did lie about all of that much of anything when it comes to the how the breakup happened. I think Amber Lynn just added context of like why at the time she was reaching out so often to Destiny for, for like affirmation and contact and codependency. She was anxious because they had just gotten doxxed and that she was also aware that Destiny had been like texting with Dana in the past and potentially this other girl. Interestingly, Amber Lynn also makes the claim that Destiny is still trying to message Dana to this day even though they have broken up and even though Destiny is in this relationship with fiance number three. Destiny is a cheater who is still actively, I don't know if she's doing it behind her fiance's back, but Dana, I'm sorry, please do not get mad at me. Destiny is unblocking Dana randomly and sending her messages trying to talk to her. Like currently to this day. And Amberlynn does follow up with that again in the, the second live stream as well and says like, yeah, it's happening. Dana said I could talk about it. I can't show the screenshots, but she said I could say that this happened. And at one point during this part of the stream, she also said that she's going to block anybody who believed Destiny, even though in a later stream, she says that Destiny was mostly telling the truth about most things. Uh, but she said she's going to block anybody who believed Destiny or who had ill intent, including reaction channels. I do think this is interesting in particular because obviously I was, well, I was one of the reaction channels blocked on Instagram. I don't know if I'm blocked on YouTube. I probably will never find out because I'm not trying to talk in her live stream chat like that anyways. But of all people, I think that I probably gave Amberlynn way more grace than what people wanted me to give Amberlynn. Although I think some people were upset over a misunderstanding where I wasn't giving Amberlynn grace. But either way, you know, I, I think that I tried to be pretty fair in hearing all sides of the story and I still ended up blocked on Instagram, which we'll talk a little bit more about in just a bit. Because I also, in several of the videos covering the Destiny, like, tea spilling, whoever, whatever, I said multiple times that I do believe that Destiny is an emotional cheater. I mean, she admitted it herself, essentially, in her videos. But the only person who's really switching up the narrative when it comes to that particular detail right now is Amber Lynn herself. You said for years that Destiny never cheated on you. Yes, because I was protecting her and I was protecting her feelings. That is who I am. When I care about someone and I love someone, whether it be friendship, relationship, whatever it may be, if I can protect them and their feelings and the way that people view them, yes. And I am done. I'm fucking so done surrounding myself with people that I have to protect. Because prior to all of this, she stood very firm and telling all of her YouTube audience that Destiny never cheated on her. Because it used to be the case that everybody thought that Destiny was a cheater and that's why they broke up. And Amber Lynn stood by for years and said, no, that's not what happened. So again, this all comes back to like, what is real and what is fake on Amber Lynn's channel? When she is out here claiming that like nobody trusts her, nobody believes her, whoever, whatever, it's all just like hard to believe anything because anytime she gets confronted with her past, she's just like, oh, well, I wasn't being honest back then. Okay. All right, exactly. And the only other thing that's uh, semi-related to Destiny in this whole part of the live stream or whatever, it's just that I found it so weird that Wifey was just chilling by her side off camera the whole stream while she ranted on her live stream about Destiny. And she's obviously welcome to do all of that, but it's weird to me because at the same time, she wants to drag Destiny for not caring about the relationship that she's in with her fiance right now. She's supposed to be engaged, like getting married, like in love with her fiance, like happy goo goo eyes with her fiance, but she's not. 
she's watching reaction channels of her ex. It's weird. Like, move on, Destiny. I don't know. It just seems very weird to me that, like, also... Destiny's not allowed to live in this this place where, like, she can't take two hours out of her day to film a video or go on a live stream and talk about Amber Lynn and then spend the rest of the 22 hours of her day, like, doing stuff with or for her fiancé. Like, like, after I get done filming, at the end of the night, I go hang out with Noel, and we don't talk anything about Amber Lynn or any of the stuff I do on YouTube. So, you know, it's just very weird to me <laughs> that, that, like... People can't live in a world outside of Amber Lynn and, and like automatically Destiny has to be neglecting her current fiance in order to talk about Amber Lynn. Another big thing that happened in this particular live stream was an issue of transphobia coming up. So I'm just gonna play a collection of clips of things that she said that I think are the concerning problematic things and then I'm gonna try to give you my most like nuanced <laughs> take and and opinions on this as a non-binary person as a queer person etc i i just i i i like females i like uh fem female anatomy is that the right word how do i word this without being like offensive that's just like what i'm into it, it what turns me on it what does it for me um i like estrogen i don't know how to say any of this without being like offensive um it's just what I like and what does it for me. Yes, I would date someone who is trans. Absolutely. freaking lutely Would I ever date Pete's? No. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Pete's has a... <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> no? I like vagina. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I don't know how to <laughs> stop. It's pride month. Uh, trans men slash non-binary people can have vaginas. I think the best way, how, how do I explain it? I like, I don't know how to explain it. Can you expand on your gender preferences? Is it really just genitalia you care about when determining who you're attracted to? Um, I like people who say they're female with vaginas. So you could be born, um, with a penis and, um, later on get like the surgery and consider yourself a female. Absolutely. Um, I just, I like, um, I don't know, just the energy that, um, females give that also have vaginas. Um, which is, I don't understand how that's transphobic. I'm so confused. Like I am, I am a lesbian. So what do lesbians like? I'm the farthest from transphobic. The farthest from that. And you know why. So I want to just start out by saying like, I don't think she's inherently being transphobic or at least not intentionally. Now I know that that is very much different than like how that might impact trans people who were watching her. And I think that that's still very important. Um, if anything, I think she's being trans ignorant, if that's a thing, <laughs> if that's a thing, uh, because it's clear that she just doesn't have really any fucking idea what she's talking about. And to that, I would say she probably would have just been better off not saying any of this stuff because it wasn't like anybody was, like, pressing her to talk about trans issues. And Lord knows she skipped, like, 1,200 other questions in the chat <laughs> that she could have answered instead of this one. But she did it anyways. And I think because of that, I hope that, you know, what I have to say can be education to her if she's watching or to anybody who might want more information about how to be supportive to trans people in the trans community. So what I will say is that the conversation about attraction to people who are trans um, is a very nuanced conversation and probably not a conversation that we can completely have in full in the time I have allotted to talk in this video. And I'll also say, like, I can only speak from my own experiences, my own understanding and knowledge of these issues, and 
that's that. I don't consider myself an expert. There's certainly probably people who are much more educated on this topic than I am. And certainly there are resources out there on YouTube that you could probably look up to learn about this or really anywhere on the internet. I guess the biggest thing I want to start off by saying is that trans people, I think for the most part, just want people to stop being so obsessed with talking about their genitals. And that was clearly like Amberlynn's hang up in this whole conversation is that it all just came back to penis and vagina. And trans people are so much more than all of that, okay? Like certainly that's a part of their own personal identity that they have to come to terms with, but like how often do you go up and ask any stranger about what is in their pants? Like you don't. <laughs> it's a weird thing to do. And I think like the hyper focus of Amberlynn talking about that as a concept during this conversation was a lot. And it's also just important to know that not all trans people aspire to medically transition and or not all trans people have access to medical health care because of the way that the American healthcare system works, at least. They don't just necessarily have access to affordable health care to help them medically transition. And so because of that, defining, like Amber Lynn did in this video, like a woman, or in her words, a female, as being something that she's attracted to only if they have some form of a vagina is offensive to trans people, especially because that's not what all trans women aspire to be, nor is that what all trans women can be, even if that's what they aspire to be. Now that's not to say that I think she should have to be attracted to all trans people, this, that, the other. The problem is, is that she said everything in the most confusing way possible in true like Amberlynn form and fashion. During the span of this live stream, she said that she would date a trans person, but she's not attracted to men and she wouldn't date somebody if they had a penis which all of those things conflict with one another. Because what she's really saying is that she's only going to date a woman if they have a vagina. And that's fully eliminating an entire group of women within the umbrella of what it means to be a woman. And just as a note while I'm here and the thought came to my mind, if y'all are going to try to fight with me about trans stuff in the comments, just don't expect me to really argue with you about it. I care a lot about trans people. I'm non-binary myself and I'm not really here to like debate on the existence of trans people. Uh, we believe that trans people are real here, <laughs> that trans women are women, trans men are men, and non-binary people exist. So all of this led to a very large conversation about genital preference in her chat. But the reality is, is that what Amber Lynn was talking about isn't a genital preference because she kept saying that she liked vaginas, but then said she didn't like men. And so if you don't like men or non-binary people with vaginas, then what you're saying is you don't like vaginas, you like women. And the reality is, is it's okay for Amber Lynn to also say things like, I don't find Pete's attractive, but she could have just left it at that without talking about Pete's and Pete's genitalia and things like that. And by Amber Lynn's own logic on Instagram about fat phobia and dating fat people, she went on this like rant. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it's not fair to call it a rant, but she did make a post about if if you didn't want to date somebody who's a fat person, then that was fat phobic. I think that's a great example of what we're talking about here and what people were trying to say in terms of her being transphobic. She was saying that people can seemingly be not attracted to, to most fat people, but it wouldn't be fair to say that they're not attracted to any any fat person because that's making a sweeping generalization about a whole demographic of people. And the concept here is similar. Like if you're saying that you aren't attracted to any woman with a penis or any trans woman or any trans man or whoever, whatever, like certainly that's probably true to some extent, but you're making a sweeping generalization that you don't really know if there's not one trans woman that you would date, especially after you already just said that you would date trans people. And maybe also the larger concern is really comes down to the way that she described what it meant to be a lesbian lesbian because the way she described being a lesbian is that the only way you could be a lesbian is if you loved a woman who had a vagina. And to be quite honest and frank with you, there are many lesbians who would not describe themselves in that way, manner, or whatever. So anyways, Amber Lynn does say that she wants to learn, okay? She does say that she wants to, you know, understand the situation better. And I know that, like, she has me blocked on Instagram, but I genuinely would be willing to have, like, a much more thorough, in-depth conversation with her about this if she wanted to. 
Although I certainly would also encourage her to talk to like an actual trans woman. I'm not a trans woman. I'm just non-binary. Um, and perhaps they could help. But although it's not anybody's responsibility to educate Amber Lynn, I'm just saying I would be willing to have a, a larger conversation with her if she wanted. And the last little bit of this first live stream that I want to talk about is just Amber Lynn's general like relationship with her viewers, haters, and reaction channels. So like I said, she did talk about blocking reactors who have ill intent, twist her words. Oh, why did, okay, someone just asked, why have I blocked reactors on Instagram lately? Um, because I am just blocking anyone with ill intent, anyone who uses my social media as a way to twist my words or monetize um, what I'm saying. And I did already make a whole video about her blocking me, so feel free to go check that out on my channel. But let me just be clear that she was the one in that particular situation who had the ill intent. She was lying about something that happened, that didn't happen, I should say, and was refusing to correct herself to me when I called her out for it and she blocked me. She's also very worried that nobody will believe her on her channel because she's a villain. I had a moment where I was like, no one's going to believe me. No matter what I say, no one is going to believe me because like, it's so easy to hate me. Like, I, I am a villain. And as I've already pointed out, I think the reason that people don't believe her on her channel anymore at all is because one, she lies. She's a lie. And two, every time that she addresses something from her past, it always comes up of like, I was trolling or I wasn't being fully honest. I wasn't actually as happy as I made it seem, this, that, the other. I do agree that in a lot of situations, people automatically just like don't believe her. I mean, even just from example of this video, the K-Cup holder incident, people just like didn't believe her, even though most of the things she said lined up with what Destiny said about the situation. She also talks about this disconnect she's feeling from her audience and how she wants to do things that she likes to do on her channel. I feel like this big disconnect between me and my audience. Like there are things I want to talk about and things I want to do and like all this stuff. And it's like, it's like the best way I can describe it is like, imagine inviting 10 people over to your home and nine of them just treat you like shit. You don't want to keep inviting them over. So I'm having a hard time. Like I'm just having a hard time. I'm just having a hard time. And it's like that one person out of the 10 who like loves me and supports me. I want to just keep them. I want to keep them. And I, I want them to stay. And I want to talk to them and show them my life and tell them all these good things. But then also share the bad. And it's like the other nine people, they make me feel so bad. They, I just, I don't even want to speak. And I, I talk about this in therapy. And my therapist has made me realize that like, stop filming for the haters stop filming for the trolls i think the larger point is is like literally just do whatever you want to do then you know if you've already decided that no matter what you do people are just going to be unhappy then why wouldn't you just choose to do the things that make you happy you know i that's what i have yet to understand in recent history about amber lynn and over the two live streams, she talks a lot about the things that her therapist has allegedly told her, including how she needs to stop filming for haters and trolls. And to be honest, I thought she already claimed a long time ago that she was no longer filming her videos for haters and trolls, but apparently she hasn't actually reached that part yet. So honestly, like, let's just get to get to, Amberlynn. Like, I'm ready for you to stop doing all of that. And she weirdly also takes time to acknowledge that the chat is really brutal and that she wouldn't want to mod anybody because she wouldn't want them to have to deal with that. And I wouldn't want to like mod anybody so because I wouldn't want people to have to like <laughs> read all of it. And that doesn't make sense to me because essentially she's saying, I'd rather just sit here and watch it myself. I'd rather just read all of these mean things to myself. Not saying that people should be leaving those mean comments, but like, 
Also, like, why are you subjecting yourself to it, period, if you wouldn't want somebody else to be subjected to it? And, like, going back to what I just said about doing stuff for haters and trolls, she's essentially acknowledging that this live stream is just existing for her to sit there and take hate comments from haters and trolls. And it also is very weird to me because somebody asks if she's going to be okay, and she mentions that she won't be okay until she turns off the live stream. Am I okay? Um... When I turn off this live stream, I'll be okay, yes. I'm just like, yeah, okay, if that's the case, then, like, let's do it. Like, why are you subjecting yourself to this? I don't, I really don't understand. And that's about all I have to cover from the first live stream. Thankfully, the second live stream is either, one, really repetitive, so I'm just, like, not going to cover a lot of things, or two, she just talks about boring, mundane things that I didn't don't need to give you all my opinion about. So uh, I I think we can get through this, this second live stream fairly quickly. So like I just mentioned, she did talk about things that her therapist has been telling her, which includes that she should be able to tell her side of her story and that her therapist thinks that these live streams are empowering. And I talked to my therapist about this and he agrees that I should be able to share my side and my story. And I agree. And the reason why I continue to stand up for myself and share my story is because it's empowering. And that's actually the word that my therapist used today is that me doing these live streams is because it makes me feel empowered because I am so tired of people putting words in my mouth. I'm skeptical about what exactly this therapist is or isn't saying and like and or what she's telling the therapist about these live streams or these videos that she makes on YouTube because she doesn't give a lot of context. She just usually like uses the word therapist to co-sign whatever behavior she wants to say that she's doing that is good. I literally just got done telling you about how she said that she wouldn't be okay until she turned off her laptop from that last live stream she did. So I don't understand why her therapist would like co-sign and find that to be a very empowering thing if she's saying that it made her feel mentally unwell. Amberlynn also brings up the, the Scooter Walmart drama about Destiny, like, leaving her behind and things like that. I think the only really interesting thing about Amberlynn's perspective on that particular story is that Amberlynn perceived people um, thinking that she was the bad guy in that situation. When I personally just found the entire idea of Amberlynn like scooting away on her Walmart motorized scooter um, and, and Destiny not being able to chase her down to be like entertaining. Like that's some stuff that ends up on the People of Walmart website. You know what I'm saying? So like that's all. I didn't think either of them were probably particularly like coming across as great. And that, and that story to begin with. Um, but I don't know that I necessarily perceived Amber Lynn as being the bad guy. Apparently, also, Destiny sent Amber Lynn a photo of Destiny, Amber Lynn, and Destiny's mom on the beach. And Amber Lynn shows the picture. Has Destiny reached out to me? Yes, she's freaking weird. I don't... Oh, I don't understand what her motive is. But, like, yesterday she sent me a picture of me and her and her mom on the beach. That's what she sent me. And I said, why are you sending me this? And I would say that does feel weird. I don't know what the motive behind Destiny sending that to Amberlynn would be. And I feel like there's probably more to the story about, <laughs> about what's going on there behind the scenes. I'd be curious to know more. She once again claims that she's learning to just do what she likes and fuck everybody else. And yeah, no one can make me feel bad about my makeup because I like it. See, that's something that you that I'm growing and I'm learning is that people can say whatever the fuck they want, but if you like something and you feel good, then feel good and ignore everyone else. But yeah, she's continuing to address negativity here in these live streams that she claims she doesn't want to address and is tired of talking about and is frustrated 
talking about it all and this, that, the other. And then comes the part that so many people <laughs> tag me in, send me messages about, because I guess Amber Lynn at one point starts like, not I guess, I watched the video. Uh, at one point, Amber Lynn starts talking about how she thinks it's unfair that everybody is criticizing her for coming on to YouTube and doing these live streams because she must need money and this, that, the other. And she's like, well, this is my job, so of course I need money. I'm, I gotta do my job if I wanna make money, which is maybe missing the point a little bit because I think what people are saying is like oh you're doing live streams so you can get super chats which is probably giving you more money than your normal like 10 minute vlog that you post on your your YouTube channel but either way despite all of that she goes on to bring me up she brings me into it the girly she blocks on the Instagram not to bring up reaction channels but Zachary Michael's a really good example like he went to college for what he was doing for his career and he ended up quitting his career to react to me talk about weird i feel like that's weird i don't know like that's just an opinion everyone can have it everyone can have one um like that's weird like going to college like you're literally actively in a career and then you quit to react to amberlyn reed a very boring youtuber like that's weird. So since we want to talk about like me going to college and my career and quitting my job to do YouTube full time, like let, let's just talk about some things. To be incredibly clear, I don't give a shit how Amberlynn makes her money, okay? <laughs> I even actually said in a recent video when Destiny was talking about, like, Amberlynn's decision to quit her job and do YouTube full-time, I even said in that video that it probably made financial sense for Amberlynn to do that because we know she went on to make way more money than whatever she was making at that maybe minimum wage job doing data entry and stuff like that. And that job was probably way more labor intensive than anything she's ever had to do for YouTube. So I don't care if she's making money on YouTube. I, I mean, maybe, maybe I vaguely recall being a little bit critical of it in like the early days of me making YouTube videos. But for all intents and purposes, I'm like, these days, my thoughts on it for sure are that like, if you can make money doing whatever, and you enjoy it, then you should do it. But when it comes to the part about me quitting my job to do YouTube full-time, that is true. I know that there are still people every once in a while that think I work a full-time job. I have not worked a full-time job since February of 2021, question mark? I think. I think it's been that long. And to be clear, I just want to let people know that, like, it is 100% normal for people to have career changes all the time. <laughs> all the time. It used to be the case that people worked at the same job forever and ever and ever and retired there. But especially, like, for millennials, it's very much not the case that somebody stays in the same career for their whole entire lives. And I have two degrees, both in education, and I've met many people through getting both of those degrees who did work in the field that we got our degrees in and have since changed from that, okay? I know people who went to school with me to be elementary school teachers, taught for a while and said, this isn't for me and I found other things to do. And similarly, I know so many people who worked in higher education, like myself, for many years and said, hey, this isn't for me anymore, I'm gonna go find something else to do. It's very normal to do, and that doesn't mean that our degrees mean any less or that we didn't learn anything from those degrees. It just means that we have gone on to do other things. And like I said, both of my degrees were in education, which is a field that's notorious for overworking employees and underpaying them at the same time. I worked my ass off for like the first three years of my YouTube career to go to work from nine to five, come straight home, maybe eat something for dinner, film a video, edit the video, upload the video, go to sleep, and then do it all over again the next day. I feel so fortunate that like, through my hard work and like a very supportive and dedicated audience on YouTube that I was able to get to a place where I could financially just do YouTube and leave my nine to five job behind. Getting to make money in this like unorthodox way has allowed me to spend more times with my, my pets, spend more time with my friends and family and partner, 
And I recognize that's not something that everybody has the opportunity to do. And I'm very, very grateful that YouTube has, has given me all of this. And honestly, if YouTube goes under or people stop watching my channel or whatever it might be, I'm also so grateful that I do have two degrees and a history of working full-time nine-to-five jobs and uh, a network of people that I met through those jobs that would be happy to hire me again. And I will say that in a capitalist society, education often means like opportunities for uh, careers and employment. But I also value so many other things that I got from my two degrees. I learned so much about myself through both of the degrees that I got. I learned so much about like interacting with other humans. I learned about a good work ethic. I, I learned so many things from my college degrees that like I don't think that I would have gotten had I not gone to college to get them. And also I hope nobody's taking this as like an elitist thing because I've worked in higher education. I'm fully aware of how inaccessible it is and I know not everybody is granted those opportunities. I wish more people were. All of this to say is just that like, yeah, I do have two degrees. I'm very proud of them. I care a lot about education. And I'm also very grateful that I can do YouTube instead of working at the full-time job I used to work at. So I hope that answers some some questions, Anne Berlin. I hope, I hope you have a better understanding of, of where I'm coming from. Although I'm pretty sure I've said all of that in a video before, but that's neither here nor there. There's also a part where Amber Lynn makes this like ludicrous claim that she puts in more work than me. And I put in more work. No tea, no shape. Work. I film my life. I talk about my true innards. Yeah, take that as a quote, please. Like my last uh, vlog or my last live stream, people uh, love the quote. I said she left me like a raisin. <laughs> Because it's true, she did. She left me like a raisin. Um, the easiest way for me to make money is to react to videos. I've I've reacted to mm, five, six videos in the last decade. That shit's easy. Um, to vlog as often as I do and to talk about the things that I do. Zach, try it, honey. Try it. And I'm honestly not entirely sure how we're quantifying more work in this case. Like she compares it to like me not ever being able to vlog my whole life like her. And of course not. <laughs> I'm not a vlogging channel. I don't aspire at least right now to be a vlogging channel, maybe in the future sometime. But yeah, no, I'm not a vlogging channel. And that's why I don't compare myself to you or care to compare myself to you all that much because like what we do is different. However, in case anybody's curious about what my work load is and then you can make your own assessments about whether or not Amber Lynn and I are doing the same amount of work on YouTube, whatever that means. I do typically post a YouTube video every day, Monday through Friday, with some exceptions. This typically involves at least an hour of filming, usually one to two hours of editing, and about an hour of uploading, all depending on the type of video I'm doing, because obviously this one has taken me much longer than all of that, because I watched nearly four hours <laughs> of live streams on 2x speed, which also includes taking notes on said live stream, putting together like an outline script type of thing so I can tell it all to you very eloquently. On top of what I do on YouTube, I also typically live stream Monday through Thursday for two hours every day on Twitch, where for the record, since this is gonna come up, I, I don't talk about Amber Lynn nearly at all, or at least I don't react to her videos over there. On top of that, there's always other stuff that might happen behind the scenes. Like for instance, I frequently am negotiating contracts for sponsored content on both Twitch and YouTube. I'm finalizing merch designs. What That's like something I'm working on currently trying to do. Um, so there's always other stuff behind all of that. But even just all of that stuff I've just mentioned is a lot of work. And you know, Amberlynn is always happy to compare herself to other YouTubers, other channels, when it fits a narrative that makes her seem like a better person. But heaven forbid y'all ever decide that you want to compare her to, I don't know, Glitter and Lasers, Hungry Fat Chick, Chantal, and any other plus size YouTuber, don't do it. Don't compare her to other people. She's not those people unless it fits her narrative. She also continues this like story that I only react to her and or one or two other people. Because of like 
people being so biased and like Zach only reacting to me and like maybe like one or two other people like people are okay with that because of the things that he says about me like and yeah I've never denied that I do react most consistently to Amber Lynn but I regularly do in fact react to more than just one or two other people certainly with time some of those things ebb and flow like I'm not currently talking about the 1000 pound sisters because they don't currently have a season sh airing on TLC. There, it's it's the off season. She also says that I only get views because of her and other people. Oh, definitely not jealous. Um, he only gets views because of me and because of other people. I would say that the videos about her do get the most views of all the videos I do. But even my worst videos about other things or other people get nearly the same amount as her worst videos do on her channel. So it's not like I'm hurting for views over here, just to be clear. I think we're doing just fine. And I also want to say that not just anybody can do this. She talked about how reactions are so easy. It's some of the easiest content she's ever done. And yet every time she does a reaction, it's fucking trash. She's not good at it. And it does take some kind of skill to take her content or other people's content and make my reaction and commentary on it interesting. And you know that because not every reaction channel is successful. There's all kinds of people who try to do reactions and realize that it's harder to do than it looks, okay? So she's acting like <laughs> it doesn't take any kind of skill because she's not good at it when it does actually take a lot of skill. And I do think that I bring people into this specifically because of me. The only other thing is much later in the video, not when she's talking about all of this or me specifically, she does make a comment about doing potato mukbangs. And to like come on here and like have a mukbang of potatoes, like you are a horrible person. And so let me just say from the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry I ate potatoes on a video on YouTube. My apologies, my sincerest apologies, Amberlynn. And the only other thing to talk about from the second live stream, oh my God, I've been filming for like an hour. This is gonna take so long to edit. The only other thing to talk about is that she did do some research so that she could understand the difference between sex and gender. Have done some research about what I said um, regarding I prefer females. That's not what I meant to say because I've learned that female is the sex while being a woman is the gender. And I didn't know that. So it's like people were telling me that I was getting messages. And then I learned what it meant. And I don't think that that was the entire problem that people had with the things that she said, as I already outlined in that part of this video. Uh, but you know what? Step by step, day by day, <laughs> we, we'll we get there. We'll get there. All right, Amberlynn, like I said, let me know if you want to talk about any of that stuff more in depth. And just for fun, here are some other weird clips of weird things that Amberlynn said during this live stream. Yes, I would visit North Korea. My stance on baked beans, not a fan. Did I sit on one of my exes? What? <laughs> I sit on Feline. No, I swear to God, I sit on her and she likes it. <laughs> I'm not even lying. I hate it. Like, I don't hate it. I hated it in the beginning because I am a self-conscious bitch. Um, but y'all, there are people out there who do not give a fuck if you're fat. They don't give a fuck. They see beyond that. And she's one of them. I can twerk. <laughs> How am I celebrating Pride Month? Eating a lot of pasta. And that is all I have time for today, besties. Thanks so much to all of you who watched any portion of this video, but especially if you watched the whole entire video. I know it was a lot to get through. Thank you so much for your patience and me um, taking the time to go through these streams and collect my thoughts. I really appreciate it. I also want to say thank you to Wudoku for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to use the link in my description box and the pinned comment to download your copy of Wudoku to play for free on iOS and Android phones. And if you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on 
all my social media. I love you all so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!